united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation by KSCE Channel 38 Christian Television. And now, United with Christ. Welcome back to United with Christ. Thank you for joining us this morning. And I'm, I'll be your host, uh, Tim Gamble with Life Challenge. And it's always a pleasure to be with you. And I was here last week, and we were talking about some very practical things, you know, understanding who you are. S someone once asked the question, who are you? Are you the person you think you are? Or are you the person you others think you are? It may not be the same thing. They may think you're cool and you're not, or you may think you're not and you are. Or are you the person you think others think you are? Or are you just confused? And so we were looking at the fact that psychologists say that every human being searches for their identity. That understanding of justification of purpose for existing. Well, we learned last week that if you don't have a goal, you'll never reach it. And that our goal needs to be to understand the truth about who we are. What, why is that so important? We learned that last week. And where does truth come from? We also learned truth comes from the Creator. If you remember, I drew a little diagram, a little picture, and I asked everyone, what, what would you say this is? It was an animal. And you could say, it's a donkey, it's a dog, it's a pig. Fifty people could have fifty different opinions. However, I drew it. And so when I said, it is a horse, it was a horse. Why is it a horse? Because I am the creator of it. I am the artist. I am the only one who can determine the truth of what it is that I've created. So if I want to know the truth about who I am and I apply that same principle, then I don't really care what society says about me. I, I only care about what my Creator says. And this is so important to understand. But how can I know what my Creator says? How can I know what His will is in my life, His purpose is for my life? How can I know that if I don't know Him? And this is where we find true fulfillment in life. This is where we try to find true peace. The love that God intended for us to live in, the joy, comes through knowing and fulfilling our purpose for existing. And that's only possible if we have that personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. As Jesus said, I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And the life that he spoke of was that exact life that we're, we're talking about, what, that everyone searches for. But how is it possible to obtain that life? Well, only through knowing Jesus. Scripture says that all things were created by him and without him nothing was created. Nothing it was. That Jesus and in John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. And all things were created by Him, and without Him nothing would be. But also says down in verse 14 that the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory is of the only begotten, the Father, full of grace and truth. Speaking of Jesus... So we, we understand, we recognize that Jesus, when He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man comes to God the Father except through me, for I created all things. Wow, that's pretty heavy. But when we understand that, and we understand that our life, the life that God intended for us to experience and to enjoy, comes through that personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Then we seek to know Him. And that's where it, be it begins. It begins with that desire in you to know God, 
to know, that desire to know who He created you to be and what your purpose is. And once that desire is in you, once you have that desire to know, then God is able to give you the understanding and the revelation and the truth that you search for. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all this will be added unto you. You know, there's a story about Peter walking on water. But he didn't just get out of the boat. He had the desire to walk in the supernatural power of God. He had the desire to be closer to Jesus out there on the water. But he didn't just get out of the boat. He said, Jesus, if you tell me to come, then I will come. Well, Jesus said, come, Peter. And Peter responded to the faith that God had given to him. He could walk on water. And he believed and he stepped out of the boat and he walked on water. But see, it began with the desire. And if you don't have the desire to know God, you don't have the desire to know the truth, you don't have the, de the desire to understand what God's will and His purpose is in your life, then you never will. You'll continue to search. But you have to have a goal in order to reach it. Can you imagine ever reaching a goal with never having one? doesn't work. Very simple principle of life. Well, we learned that vision is that understanding of God's will, of His perspective and His desire and His purpose. See, and without vision, we perish. So, we, we want to be able to see. We want to be able to have that vision. We were reading in Corinthians 4, 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. It says, The God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbeliever, lest they should see the glorious light of the gospel of Christ, who is the image of God. You see, our minds are blinded. We have no vision. We can't see. We can't understand. That revelation, that opening of our eyes, our ability to see and understand and know God's will and His purpose comes through knowing Him. It's that personal relationship. It's that communion that we have with Him. See? Well, let's take a moment and let's, let's go back to what we were talking about last week and, and understanding our identity and understanding how the enemy works. Because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's, that's his whole objective, is to steal your life, to, to keep you from fulfilling your purpose for being created. And as we learned last week, when we are not fulfilling our purpose, if we're believing a lie about who we are, well, we become useless because we no longer fulfill our purpose. It's like a hammer saying, I don't want to be a hammer, I want to be a tape measure. Well, the carpenter can't use the hammer as a tape measure because it's not a tape measure. So, if the hammer believes he's a tape measure, it can't be used, it becomes useless. See, Satan's greatest deception is to get us to believe a lie about who we are. And this is why it's so important for you to know the truth. Jesus said, if you'll be my disciples, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Free from the lies that hold us captive and hold us in strongholds of the enemy. Well, Satan's power is to lie. He's the great deceiver, the father of lies. But let's look and see just kind of how he works, all right? Let's just imagine that you are eight years old and you wake up in the morning feeling really good and feeling like you just want to give your mom or dad a big hug. And you see your dad out there working on some project and you run out there to give him a big hug and in your enthusiasm you bump into his project and it falls and breaks. Well, in a moment of reaction, he says, you idiot. Oh, how do you feel? You're crushed. 
you run in the house feeling, I'm so stupid. I'm just, you know, and you slam the door open and it hits your brother and your brother says, watch where you're going, stupid. I'm such an idiot. I'm so stupid. Everybody thinks that. You get to school and you see your friends laughing about something and you begin to imagine that they're laughing at you. And you're sitting there at your desk and you can't work. You're just, you're, you're not thinking clearly. And your teacher comes up and says, you know, you need to focus or you'll never amount to anything. See, I'm a stupid idiot that will never amount to anything. Is that the truth? Of course it's not the truth. But if you believe it, you're trapped in it. A Satanist once told me when I, t I was talking to him about the love of Jesus, and he said, I can never accept God's love. He says, I would have to slit my own throat before I could accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. And then he said, so go on, keep pushing me. I'm this close to my own suicide. And it'll be your fault because you pushed me into it. Well, I looked at him and I said, what happened to you when you were young that makes you believe that you can never know God's love? He says, hangs his head and he says, I was dedicated to Satan when I was a baby. I don't have a choice but to slit my own throat before I could ever accept Jesus as my Savior. And I said, you know, that's a lie. And he looked up at me and he says, I know it's a lie, but I believe it and therefore I'm trapped in it. You see, what are the lies that are holding you captive? The lies that you have believed that are holding you a prisoner and allowing the enemy to steal your joy and to steal your peace and to steal your life so that you never fulfill your purpose, to steal your identity. What are those lies? And how can you be set free? Let's, let's look at another scenario. Let's say that you're the artist and you draw this beautiful painting. And this painting, what is the purpose of this painting? Well, obviously to express whatever you're wanting to express. But the first purpose of this painting is to honor you. As the artist, you receive the glory and the honor from this painting, right? No one comes up and says, this painting did a great job on itself. The painting doesn't go around saying, well, look at me, I'm so great. No, the painting reflects you, expresses your thoughts, your heart, your passion, and honors you. But what if I don't want it to honor you? So I come in here where you're not in the room and I smear mud all over it. Well, so other people walk in the room and say, well, who hung their garbage on the wall? What do you see when you walk in the room? Do you see the garbage on the wall? Or do you see what's under the garbage? Do you see the truth of what it was created to be? Well, see, if all you see is the mud and the garbage on the wall, that's what it'll remain. That's what it'll stay. But because you're the artist, because you're the creator of this beautiful piece of art, you know the truth of what's under that mud. And if we allow you, you will clean it up and restore it to what it was created to be. Right? Well, that beautiful piece of art, that beautiful creation is you. God created you with that purpose to fulfill His passion, to, to express and glorify and honor Him. But the devil doesn't want that to happen. So he has smeared as much mud and garbage in your life as possible. That's what he does. Steal, kill, destroy. And he's been st stealing from you all your life. He's been smearing mud in your, all your life. And you may hear that whisper in your ear. Look. Look in the mirror. You're not worth anything. There's no God. Even if there was a God, He wouldn't want you. You're just a piece of garbage. Is that true? No. It's a lie. But if you believe it, you're trapped. You're trapped in it. Well, see, in Corinthians 10, 
It says, the weapons of our warfare are not flesh, okay, they're, but they're mighty, they're spiritual, and they're mighty for pulling down strongholds. The strongholds like what we're talking about in your life. Okay. How? Well, if we continue to read, it says, by casting out every imagination. What does that mean? Cast out every imagination and take into captivity every thought for God's glory. See? Casting out imagination means throwing out those thoughts that are not from God, those thoughts that are lies from the enemy, those thoughts that create fruits, that, de- that produce fruits of death. What are the fruits of death? We know that the fruits of life, the fruits of the Spirit, are love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faith, meekness, temperance, Those are the fruits of life, the fruits of the Spirit of God, when the Spirit of God lives in us. But the fruits of death are fears and anxieties and guilt and depression and all the things that that we experience when we're separated from God. Well, Jesus said, by their fruits you shall know them. Now, he was specifically talking about those that are of God. You will know those are of God because they reflect the fruit of the Spirit. The love. They walk in love. And in whatever situation, they're at peace. And when hardships come, there's still joy in their life because the Spirit of God lives in them and Christ lives through them. And so the world around them sees Christ and is drawn to Him. That's the way it's supposed to be. But the fruits of death are that anxieties and those fears and those guilt and those depressions that we struggle with every day. That's not living the victorious life. That's living under the lies of the enemy with the strongholds of the enemy choking us out. Well, how do we know which are the thoughts of the enemy that we can cast them out? Well, look at the fruit. If the thought that I'm thinking produces guilt, it isn't from God. Throw it out. If the thought that I'm thinking produces depression, it's not from God. Throw it out. If the thought from God, if the thought I'm thinking produces fear, anxiety, stress, It's not from God. Throw it out. But it also explains to us there that we must replace those thoughts with the thoughts that honor God. Okay? Well, in Philippians uh, 4, it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. See, the battlefield is your mind. The enemy wants to control your mind because if he has hold of your mind, he's got you. Well, that's the where the strongholds are. That's what God wants to be set free. And He's given us the power through His Spirit to, because it says that it is, it is the God that wills in us and to do of His good pleasure. It's the Holy Spirit in us when we walk with Him that allows us, gives us the power to cast out those imaginations, those thoughts that are not from God and replace them with the thoughts that are from God. The thoughts of thankfulness. Joy comes from a thankful heart. Peace comes from trusting the Lord. You can't trust Him if you don't know Him. So it all comes back to knowing Him and knowing and just spending time in communing with Him. 
That's what God wants. It's what Jesus meant when he said, pray without ceasing. He didn't mean stay in a closet and, and beg all for, you know, 24-7. No, he was saying, be in communication with me on a constant, continual basis. Good communication skills involve 85% listening. So it's not just talking. Praying without ceasing is listening to the Lord, communing with the Lord, and allowing the Lord to reveal to you His truths and give you direction, purpose. It says in Proverbs 3, 6, Acknowledge Him in all your ways and He will direct your paths. And that's what we want. We want God to show us our, His will for our life so we can walk in His will. We can fulfill our purpose. As I quoted um, Romans 12, 2 last week, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed through the renewing of your mind so that you can know and fulfill God's perfect will in your life. That transformation comes through God working through His Word, working in us. But we have to meditate on His Word day and night. That's, it's His Word that has the power to transform us. But if we're not meditating, like David said, Thy Word have I hid in my heart that, in, that I might not sin against you. I meditate on it day and night. Why? Because when, as a man thinketh, so is he. What you think is what you become. If all you think about today is I got to stop eating, I got to stop eating, I got to stop eating. All you're thinking about is eating. Even though it's in the negative sense, I guarantee you the craving's going to be worse and you just want to go get something else to eat because all you're thinking about is eating. You got to replace those thoughts. Replace them with thanksgiving. Replace them with with caring for others. Replace them with just praising the Lord. And that's what we're reading there in, in Philippians. If there's going to be any good in your life, if there's going to be any praise, if anyone is going to see Christ living through you, your mind has to be on the Lord. It has to be in the right place. And that comes through the spending time with the Lord meditating on the Lord. Okay. Now, let's go back for just a moment. We're talking about our identity in Christ. Understanding what, why God created us and what our purpose is. So I'm going to give you another very simple illustration. I want you to look for a moment in a mirror. Just Look in a mirror. Let's pretend this is a mirror. And when you look in that mirror, what do you see? Well, you see a reflection of you, right? Doesn't reflect me, reflects you. What's the purpose of that reflection in the mirror? Well, its purpose is to reflect you. It glorifies you. All your glory is reflected in this image in the mirror. So you could say that this image in the mirror finds its identity in you. When you wave, it waves back. When you smile, it smiles. When you jump, it jumps. Right? So it's reflecting your glory through obedience to your will. Now, what life does this image have? None. The only life that this image has is in you. You see? Because when you waved it, waved back. But it has no life of its own. So we can say that this image finds its identity in you and it finds its life in you. Right? But what if you give this image the power to say no? And when you wave, it says no. And when you smile, says no. When you jump, says no. Well, see, the moment that it chooses to say no to your will, what happens? It loses its life. It becomes dead. It also loses its identity. It's no longer fulfilling its purpose for existing. 
And you see, this is what God wants you to understand. That you were created in the image of God. That's what scripture says. That we were created in the image of God for the same purpose, to reflect His glory. But how? Through obedience to His will. And when we understand His will for our life, and we understand His purpose for our life, and we walk in that, what happens? We find our identity. We find life as God meant for us to know. You know, in Matthew 7, in the sermon, in the end of the Sermon on the Mount, someone asked Jesus, who will enter the kingdom of heaven? How did Jesus respond? He said, only those who do my Father's will. And that is what we're talking about. God is looking for those who walk with Him, who reflect His glory, who He lives through. And next week, hopefully we will talk more about that. Because this is such an important topic, an understanding of what faith is and, and how it really truly applies to our life and how we can walk by faith. We can walk according to the will of God. We quoted, I quoted a verse last week in 1 John 2, 15. It says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And the world passes away in the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of my Father abides forever. You see, this is fulfilling the purpose that God created us. Remember, you are that beautiful creation. Don't let Satan steal any more from you. Understand the truth of what's behind. Ask God to show you through his eyes what's behind that garbage so that He can restore you, allow Him to restore you to the person that He created you to be. That's God's desire for your life. It's His plan for your life. And you will be blessed to find life and purpose in Him. I want to thank you again for joining us here at United in Christ. And please come back next week, but continue to watch here at Channel 38. We're here for you. And we really appreciate your, your audience, your viewing, your participation. We just ask God to bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, and we'll see you next week. Thank you for watching United with Christ. We pray this has been a blessing to you, and we invite you to tune in again tomorrow. We invite your comments, questions, or prayer requests. You may contact us at KSEE Christian Television, 2201 East Wyoming Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79903, or call us at 915-532-8588 during regular business hours, or you can visit us on our website at www.kse.com. God bless you.